Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Spear, I, I talked in my opening statements about the, the prices of diesel and uh, how they've been at a record high in June of 2022. Um, can you talk about the impacts uh, of, of when these prices are way up like they are and have been for a sustained period of time? What impact that has on your industry and um, how it impacts the small businesses, many of them small businesses, some quite large uh, across the country? It's significant, Senator. Uh, fuel costs are our second highest cost just under labor. Under that, you've got safety, including training. It's a lot of important operational expenditures, but fuel is our second highest cost, and that was before we went to 40-year highs on inflation. It should come as no surprise with the standard in California and Oregon, we have litigated it directly because of the cost impact that it has on our industry, particularly those that are running 20 trucks or less or owner operators, one truck. Are you in the middle of that litigation right now? We are indeed. Yeah. Okay, so would you say then that uh, these regulations, in, as I said in my opening statement, are leading to uh, higher prices in those particular states? Yeah, we were dealing nationally with 40-year highs on inflation. These two states compounded that problem, which is why you see fuel costs exceeding $7 in California, you know, nearly six fifty in Oregon. You know, that's much, much higher than the national average, as you said. But if you're a small carrier, an owner operator, you don't have the luxury of a fuel contract. You're paying retail at the pump. So you're absorbing that cost into your operational expenses. So it's chipping away. You're gonna see consolidation in our industry as a result, and it's gonna hurt the very small businesses that this committee you know, says it supports. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Graff, um, I think that Appalachian hydrogen hub sounds really good to me. <laughs> and thank you for what you're doing uh, to, uh, to lend your expertise, and, and, and I know we're in competition with a lot of good ones, as you mentioned, but uh, I appreciate you mentioning that. Um, let me ask you a question. Uh, I, I think this is an important question when we're all looking at what the environmental impacts can be. You know, you, you mentioned, Mr. Cooper mentioned life cycle. So in order to get to an EV, uh, in order to get to a hydrogen car, there's a lot that goes before you actually or at the tailpipe, I guess is how they say it, uh, um, measuring and before the tailpipe. So a life cycle. Have you done an analysis of that? Analysis of that of what it takes to create the hydrogens and and uh, uh, that goes into these vehicles and and how that how the emissions. I, I guess I'm focusing more on emissions than cost, although we know that that does drive up the cost if you have to do another process before another process. Do you, what are your thoughts on that? on a life cycle analysis. Thanks for the question, Ranking Member Capito. Clearly, we need to look at every aspect of basically well-to-wheel, so to speak, in, in the approach uh, for any pathway to produce uh, energy and understand its emissions potential and how we address that. In terms of hydrogen, uh, we have been in the uh, business of producing uh, and transporting and utilizing hydrogen for over 60 years. And we have the full capabilities to make sure that hydrogen itself uh, is well managed, it's well contained, uh, and its fugitive emissions as you consider its impact on the environment are, are genuinely more second order. I think we look at safety, we look at what we can do to make sure that there is the safe transport, the safe production, the safe use of hydrogen. Uh, but any fugitive emission of hydrogen into the atmosphere has a, a much lower effect than other uh, hydrocarbons or other substances that may end up in the environment. Uh, okay, Mr. Cooper, uh, what, uh, on the uh, ethanol, obviously there is an expenditure of a great deal of energy to make ethanol. Uh, how would you answer that question on life cycle, both emissions right. and uh, cost? Yeah, we, we fully support a well-to-wheels, full life cycle approach when analyzing the carbon intensity of, of all fuel pathways. And, and we agree that in particular, when you talk about electric vehicles, uh, you, we often hear them referred to as zero emissions vehicles. Well, that's ignoring all of the upstream emissions associated with electricity production. But for corn ethanol specifically, uh, the Department of Energy analyzes in great detail that full life cycle uh, energy use and emissions involved with farming, and harvesting the corn and, and processing that corn into ethanol. When you add all of that together, corn ethanol has an emissions footprint that is about 50% lower than gasoline. So that does include all the 
all the farm inputs and all the energy used on the farm all the way through the process okay. uh, to the retail gas station, about okay. 50%. Let me ask uh, Mr. Graff a quick question too. Does California have uh, like personal vehicles that are hydrogen? That, that doesn't exist right now, does it? In, in any large measure? Ranking uh, member Capito, there are currently 15,000 hydrogen fuel cell vehicles that have been sold into the California market. Uh -huh. uh, I mentioned earlier that we had built uh, the first ever uh, liquid hydrogen production facility to right. provide renewable hydrogen into the state. And that was specific uh, in working with the automotive companies to facilitate the introduction of those vehicles. What's the cost of a hydrogen vehicle? I can't speak to the exact cost today. Uh -huh. uh, I think that depending on the model and the make, you're in the fifty to sixty thousand dollar range today. And they're quite heavy as and, well. Correct? And no, they're quite light actually. They are. Uh, they're much lighter uh, than, for example, a battery-powered electric vehicle. Right. Well, the electric vehicles are a lot heavier than the vehicles we have. But their weight would be comparable to, to the weight you have in other vehicles. Today. Okay. All right. Thank you, um, Mr. Merkley.